Set me free from my distress, O Lord. See my lowliness and suffering, and take away all my sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered for Reverend George A. Carrick. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of all creation, who are pleased to give the bishop St. Polycarp a place in the company of the martyrs, grant through his intercession that sharing with him in the chalice of Christ, we may rise through the Holy Spirit to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, if the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this? and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair? Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked turning from the wickedness he has committed does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live he shall not die. The word of the Lord.
If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released 
until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's easy for us to think that the Old Testament is very strict and that the New Testament is more gentle. But Jesus clearly shows us today that the New Testament is actually more strict. The old law said, do not kill. And Jesus says, don't be upset. So that seems more strict, right? Saying don't be angry compared with the don't kill. And that means that we would have a huge problem. If we're driving the car, let's say, and you see somebody driving next to you and you say, hey, what's wrong with you, you fool? Then Jesus is saying you're like a murderer. And for all of us, we all do this. We are all doomed, right? <laughs> That's so strict. How can we possibly fulfill that? It is impossible. On Sunday, we'll have the reading about Jesus traveling up the mountain and his transfiguration. And Peter, who's with him, sees that happening. He sees that beautiful, powerful moment. But Jesus tells him not to say anything, to be patient. Because Jesus has other things that he wants to show the world that are even more powerful compared with that. And we see that here in our church when we look at the crucifix. That work on the cross is more beautiful, is more powerful because it shows mercy. And that is the thing that we need. We need mercy. Jesus is telling us how awful our sins are and, of course, in our human nature, how often we sin. But he doesn't want us to despair because of that. He doesn't want us to feel discouraged or hopeless Because he is ready to show us his mercy, his victory, even in spite of our sins. And so with the Old Testament, we know we have sinned. And in the New Testament, we know that we have sinned in an even worse way. But at the same time, <clears throat> with the New Testament, we know more about God's mercy. And so... We are not afraid to acknowledge our sins because the more that we are aware of our sins, the more that we discover that we really are full of sin, the more we can beg the Lord for his mercy, ask for his help and his healing. So we should be eager to find more sins within ourselves because that means it will lead to more mercy of God and our sanctification. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention for the terminally ill, we pray that those with a terminal illness in their families receive the necessary physical and spiritual care and accompaniment. We pray to the Lord. For Bishop Sean, that he leads the Archdiocese to fruitful evangelization. We pray to the Lord. For our political leaders, 
that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders, we pray to the Lord. For the victims and those spectators who were impacted by the Kansas City shooting following the Super Bowl champion rally, we pray to the Lord. For those who are being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. For our Lenten journey, may our hearts and minds be free from sin and open to the goodness of God. We pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, we pray to the Lord. For world peace, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. We remember in a special way Reverend George A. Carrig, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray to you with confidence as we unite our poor prayers to the prayers of St. Polycarp, St. Jude, St. Joseph, and especially with the perfect prayer of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Thus be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thus be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness, you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored. 
Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Robert, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy. Lamb of God, have mercy. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should engender my root, but only state the word, my soul shall be healed.
As I live, says the Lord, I do not desire the death of the sinner, but rather that he turn back and live. Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, in cleansing us of old ways. Take us up into the mystery of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.